Therefore, our motto, the motto of our organization is to serve with entrepreneurship the global society. Economic development without social progress is not sustainable. Social progress without economic development is impossible. All together now, we are nearly 2,000 leaders in this room to show the world that despite the dramatic financial developments of this month, we use our capabilities to build together a future which is more prosperous, more responsible, more cooperative, and more harmonious. You are the architects of this future. Now, please welcome Mayor Wang. Distinguished Executive Chairman Schwab, dear guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The annual meeting of the new champions 2008 opens today ceremoniously. The Chinese central government has attached great importance to the forum. Premier Wen Jiabao attends the meeting despite his tight schedule and will deliver a keynote speech. On behalf of Mr. Zhang Gaoli, member of the Political Bureau of the CPC Central Committee and Party Secretary of Tianjin Municipal Party Committee, on behalf of Tianjin Municipal Government and 11 million people of Tianjin, I would like to extend a warm welcome to the guests here and congratulate on the successful opening of the forum. Thirty-seven years ago, Professor Schwab, with his great vision, founded the World Economic Forum. Today, we would like to express our special gratitude to him for introducing the World Economic Forum to China, to Tianjin, and for his great contributions to this event. My gratitude also go to National Development and Reform Commission and other relevant departments, as well as friends from various circles who care and support this forum. Tianjin is well known as a historical and cultural city with its unique charm. In the past three decades, since reform and opening, its economic growth rate remains over 10%. In saving energy and resources, protecting ecological environment and enhancing social security, Tianjin has made remarkable achievements. Dear friends, the venue for the meeting today locates in Tianjin Binhai New Area, or TBNA. In 2006, TBNA that covers 2,270 square kilometers was incorporated into the National Strategic Plan and was granted the title of National Pilot Zone for Comprehensive Reform by Chinese government. President Hu Jintao and Premier Wen Jiabao have inspected the area several times. They put forward specific requirements and pointed out the development orientation. The theme of the current new champions annual meeting is the next wave of growth. As the national strategy focused area and the new economic growth poll of China, TBNA may well match the theme. We are now making great efforts to explore a people-oriented, comprehensive, harmonious, and sustainable mode of development. We are committed to scientific development that features high-tech, less resource consumption, less environmental pollution, and better economic benefits. We are committed to pioneer the establishment of socialist market economy and be part of the world economy. We are committed to revitalize the economy of Circum Bohai area in North China. We are committed to protect intellectual property rights based on current international rules. We are committed to 
to improve people's livelihood. The social justice, maintain social justice and fair, and secure public safety. Ladies and gentlemen, one world, one dream, which is the slogan of 2008 Beijing Olympics, has moved the whole world. When world economy is being increasingly complicated, it seems even more important to confront financial turmoil, energy shortage, food shortage, climate change, and other worldwide challenges. Seeking development in changes and seeking harmony in development are important topics of common concern. As the host city of the current annual meeting, Tianjin will do its best to provide better services and make this meeting a fruitful and high-level international event. Finally, may the forum be a complete success. May all of you enjoy your stay in Tianjin. Thank you. Please welcome His Excellency Mr. Wen Jiabao, Premier of the State Council of the People's Republic of China. Your Excellency Premier Wen Chabao, distinguished participants, we feel all honoured by your presence today among us. It's the second time that you participate at this annual meeting of the global growth companies and the new champions. And we appreciate it even more because you are just coming back from New York, where you attended the General Assembly, and you made a very important speech on the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals. Mr. Premier, you find here people from. Nearly 90 countries, 2,000 leaders from all walks of life, and I think in some way we represent also this great vision of one world, one dream. We know we are interdependent on a global level. We know it even more since. The crisis erupted, but we also have one dream, all together, and the dream is to create, and I speak 
from a business perspective, the dream is to create sustainable economic development. Sustainable in economic, in environmental, and in social terms. I'm proud to say, Premier, that the second pillar of the World Economic Forum and the community of the new champions are now well established. And we all owe you particular thanks because I'm considering you as a co father of those ambitious endeavors to establish a true world-like economic summit here in China and to contribute in such a way to a harmonious development in the world and in China. Your personal support and that of the government of China, represented by our partners in the NDRC, the National Development and Reform Commission, are key factors in building this community of new champions. In today's world of economic and financial turmoil, China has an important role to play in driving growth and strengthening the global economy and global cooperation. It is in this context that we are here particularly eager to listen to you, Premier Wen, on your plans, your experience, your dreams for the Chinese economy and China's role in the global community which we represent in the years to come. We thank you for your presence, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome Premier Wen. Professor Klaus Schwab, Executive Chairman of the World Economic Forum, distinguished the guests. Let me begin by extending on behalf of the Chinese government and in my own name warm congratulations on the opening of the World Economic Forum Summer Davos 2008 in Tianjin and a warm welcome to all of you. In the 37 years since its inception, the World Economic Forum has grown into an important platform for international exchanges and dialogue and played an active role in promoting world development and progress. Last year, the summit Davos had its first successful annual meeting in Dalian, China, and now it's holding this second annual meeting in Tianjin. We applaud the forum's progress and achievements and are pleased with the deepened cooperation between China and the forum. This year marks the 30th anniversary of reform and opening up in China. What was China like 30 years ago? At that time, we had just to put an end to the Cultural Revolution and the country was in a backward and closed or semi-closed state with the economy on the brink of a collapse. Where should China go? This was a big and pressing question facing the Chinese people. Following the principles of free minds and seeking truth from facts, we chose the path of reform and opening up, a critical choice that has since shaped the course of development of contemporary China. China's reform began in the rural areas.
What started as a small stream grew into an unstoppable mighty current. It spread from the country to cities, and from the economic sector to the political, cultural, social, and all other fields. The opening up endeavor started with the establishment of Shenzhen and three other special economic zones, and expanded. To cities along the coast, rivers, and border areas, and eventually became an all-directional and multi-tiered opening up. We have achieved the historic transition from a highly centralized planned economy to a vibrant socialist market economy, and from a closed or semi-closed society to one that is fully open to the outside world. We have established the basic economic system for the primary stage of socialism, a modern corporate system that meets the needs of the market economy, and a modern market system that is unified, open, competitive, and in good order. We have built a macro economic regulation system that relies mainly on economic and legal means. And we have gradually improved the system under which distribution according to work is dominant, and a variety of distribution modes coexist. The social safety net has been further improved for greater equity and justice. At the same time, we have advanced reform in education, culture, science, technology. Health and other areas promoted political restructuring with the focus on expanding socialist democracy, and adopted the strategy of building a country under the rule of law. Reform and opening up brought a fundamental change to the closed, backward, and ossified situation that had existed in China for years. The freed people's minds broke the institutional barriers to development, unleashed tremendous enthusiasm and the creativity of hundreds of millions of Chinese people. It injected great vigor and vitality into the nation, and greatly stimulated economic and social development. As a result. China has achieved 30 years of continued fast economic growth. Back in 1978, China's GDP accounted for only 1% of the world's total. By 2007, it was over 5%. China's share in global trade jumped from less than 1% to roughly 8% during this period. Reform and opening up have delivered real benefits to the people, whose livelihood has undergone great changes, from lack of adequate food and clothing to moderate prosperity. What is more important is that reform and opening up have invigorated the entire society and enabled people to freely pursue a happy life through hard work. Frugality and wisdom. Ladies and gentlemen, China's changes over the past three decades would not have been possible without reform and opening up. To meet the goals of modernization drive and build China into a prosperous, strong, democratic, culturally advanced. And harmonious country, we must remain committed to reform and opening up. China is still in the primary stage of socialism, and will remain so for a long time to come. And there are many economic and social issues that call for our attention. There is a lack of balance and coordination in the development between urban and rural areas, among different regions, and between economic and social sectors. The pattern of economic growth. Remains inefficient, 
There are heavy population resources and environmental pressures, as well as many challenges in employment, social security, income distribution, education, and health. Corruption is also a serious problem. The fundamental solution to these problems lies in dependent reform. Only by continuing reform and opening up, and unswervingly following the path of socialism with distinctive Chinese features, can China have a bright future. Therefore, reform and opening up must be carried on through the entire process of China's modernization drive. We will continue to deepen economic reform. We will further improve the basic economic system and market system, deepen reform of the fiscal taxation and the banking systems, and improve the macroeconomic regulation system. At the current stage, it is particularly important to accelerate reform of the price setting mechanism of resource products, bring into full play the basic role of the market in resources allocation, further deepen reform to institute the shareholding system in SOEs, and improve the modern corporate system. We will build better public finance and the transfer payment systems push forward reform of value added tax, set up and improve the compensation systems for use of resources and for damage caused to the ecosystem, and carry forward reform of the resource taxes system. We will also work hard to develop financial markets of various types, promote stable and sound developments of the capital market, improve the RMB exchange rate regime, and gradually make the RMB convertible and uh, capital accounts. By deepening reform, we aim to build a whole set of systems that can better meet the needs of modern economic development. We will continue to promote political restructuring and reforming other aspects. People's democracy is the lifeblood of socialism. Without democracy, there can be no socialism. We will not only improve people's lives by developing economy, but also protect their democratic rights by improving democracy and the legal system and achieve social equity and justice. We will build a socialist country under the rule of law and run state and social affairs according to law. We will create conditions that allow people to criticize and supervise the work of the government more effectively and foster a lively political environment in which everyone feels happy and the society is harmonious. We must ensure that our education system can meet the needs of the people and every child can afford to go to school and receive good education. We will set up basic medical and healthcare system for the entire population. And we will further improve the social security system covering both urban and rural areas at a faster pace, take better care of the vulnerable in a society, and let everyone share the fruits of reform and development. We will further deepen and broaden opening up. Opening up also means reform. Only an open and inclusive country can prosper. China's opening up is long-term and all-directional that benefits all. We will stick to all those policies that facilitate opening up. We will keep learning from and drawing upon all the achievements of human civilization. We will take an active part in economic globalization, 
promote the establishment of a just and equitable international trade system and financial regime. We will firmly support the efforts to achieve early and balanced results at the Doha round negotiations and improve the norms governing international trade, push forward trade and investment liberalization and facilitation, and continue to play a constructive role in a multilateral trading system. We will deepen the foreign-related economic structural reform, improve foreign-related economic laws, regulations and policies, expand market access, strengthen the protection of intellectual property rights, and provide a better environment for foreign businesses in China. With a better system, a dynamic society, sustained and steady development, and greater openness, China will not only bring more benefits to the 1.3 billion Chinese people, but also make greater contribution to world peace and development. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said earlier in, the, in this year, 2008 could be the most difficult year for China's economy. We experienced heavy snow and sleet storms and a devastating earthquake and faced a complex and changing situation both at home and abroad. Yet, we have overcome difficulties one after another and maintained a momentum of steady and fast economic growth. In the first six months, the GDP grew by 10.4% over the corresponding period of last year. Agriculture has enjoyed good development and summer crops have registered five consecutive years of increase. The demands for investment, consumption and export are growing in a more balanced way and there is better coordination in economic development. With accelerated adjustment in industrial structure, market progress in energy conservation and emission reduction, and fairly rapid increase in fiscal revenue and business profits, the quality and efficiency of development have been further enhanced. More jobs have been created in urban areas, and urban and rural income continue to grow. The consumer price index has been coming down in recent months. In short, the economic fundamentals in China remain unchanged and the economy is moving in a direction envisaged in a macroeconomic control policy. I know you are interested in whether the Chinese economy will be able to maintain steady and fast growth. Let me share with you my observations. We do face considerable difficulties. First, the world economic environment is getting tougher and more complex, with exacerbated financial volatility and notable economic slowdown. Second, pressure for domestic price rises remains high. The foundation for agriculture is still weak. The constraint on development posed by energy and resources is serious. Some industries and businesses are having difficulties with production and management, while hidden problems still exist in the financial sector. However, all these are difficulties that have occurred in the course of our development. There are many favorable conditions for China to maintain sustained and fast growth. China is in a stage of rapid industrialization and urbanization, and it has huge potential for economic growth. The important period of strategic opportunities for China's development will last quite a long time. There is abundant supply of labor and capital as well as huge potential of increased domestic consumption and investment demands. 
China's market is vast, and its enterprises are becoming more competitive and dynamic. Our ability and level of macroeconomic control continue to improve through practice. China enjoys political and social stability. In the course of reform and opening up, we have formulated guidelines, strategies, and principles that meet our national conditions and the will of the people. All of these factors will have a long-term impact. In addition, peace and development remain the main trend of the world today, and the international environment as a whole is favorable to China's development. We have full confidence and capability to overcome various difficulties, to ensure sound and fast growth of the national economy for an even longer period of time. The host city of this forum, Tianjin, is the birthplace of China's modern industry and one of the earliest cities opening to the outside world. It is also an international port city. To develop and open up Tianjin's Binghai New Area is part of China's overall national development strategy. And will become a new growth point in China. Many of you here are from growing enterprises that are most dynamic, competitive, and full of development potential. You are welcome to invest in China, to start businesses in Tianjin, and to seize the opportunity and pursue greater development. In conclusion, I sincerely wish this forum full success. Thank you all. Like to express all our gratitude for this very comprehensive speech, and we were very reassured to hear from the premier the commitment to economic reform, to opening up, to the issues on the global agenda like WTO. We have time for some questions, and Premier Wen, I would like to ask you first. You have a very integrated, comprehensive policy, and you have here in front 1,000 business leaders. What is your advice to the business leaders? What would you like to see from the business leaders assembled here? What could they do better? China's economic policy in the final analysis is to maintain long-term, smooth, and fast economic growth. This is not the need of China. It will also contribute to the stability of the world. To achieve this goal, we will unswervingly follow the policy of reform and opening up. At the same time, in the face of the current international financial and economic volatility and the difficulties it has resulted, we will take 
cautious and prudent macroeconomic policies, so as to address the problems and imbalances that have occurred in our economic development. We have confidence in China's economic development. The businesses are important parts of our economy. I would like to say to the entrepreneurs the following two points. First, they should remain committed to innovation if they want to become the new champions and their business become the new champion businesses. They have to be innovative and take the lead in doing so, otherwise they will not be successful. Second, entrepreneurs must have a high moral ground. I hope every entrepreneur and every business will have a morality an integral part of their blood. Only when production is well combined with the morality can businesses become the businesses needed by the society. For the companies and businesses in other parts of the world, we welcome you to China to make investments. China will create a level playground, a complete legal framework and the environment for you. I hope while making investments and expanding business in China, you will bring to us technologies. This is good for your business development and for our cooperation. Thank you. Premier, when you outlined in your speech uh, some of the challenges the world faces today, shared challenges from the current financial crisis to um, environmental uh, degradation, what are the most significant global issues that you feel are not sufficiently addressed or adequately addressed? among the international decision makers. At present, in terms of economic and financial challenges, the most important one, I think, is caused by the recent or latest development in the subprime mortgage crisis in the United States because at present this crisis has rippled to some enterprises, companies, also the overall economy. And this has caused international economic slowdown and we should 
take it very seriously. In my view, there are two things that are very important. First, countries in the world should strengthen cooperation. All countries should take proactive measures to deal with this. Only with cooperation can we cope with challenge or crisis. Second, when economic and financial crisis occurs, economists and entrepreneurs should be confident. Their confidence is all the more important and the confidence of the people is all the more important and the confidence of state leaders is also very important. As I said earlier, at this moment, confidence is more valuable and precious than currency and gold. Third, I think what China can do is to maintain the momentum of dynamic, stable and sustained growth of China's economy and avoid abrupt ups and downs. That would be the most important contribution to the global economy. Coming to the end of our session and uh, maybe at the end it's appropriate to ask you a, a more personal question. Um, you have um, confronted, as you mentioned in your speech, a number of um, challenges, uh, the natural disasters, including the snowstorm, the earthquake. We all admired, even living in Switzerland, we admired your decisive, fast uh, leadership action you have taken. You had very positive events like uh, the Olympic Games, now the launching of the seventh um, space mission. Um, you had to confront uh, uh, now the last 10 days the uh, financial crisis. What, Premier, what is the, un, the profound and unanticipated lesson which you took out of this crisis management? This year has been indeed a special year for China. I should say there are both good events and bad things happening in this year. It is no exaggeration to say that we have experienced tragic things and most joyful events. Such a situation poses a grave challenge and is a grave test to the Chinese government and people. In the face of disasters and difficulties, we as the leaders most important of all should have the courage to rise to challenges and shall not be daunted by the difficulties. And a leader should be able to take resolute and timely measures to address those difficulties.
When a disaster occurs, our nation has demonstrated perseverance, great courage, and an indomitable spirit. As I have often said, what they have lost in disasters will be properly compensated in the future. In recent time, we face two major problems internationally, as I said a while ago. We face international financial volatility and economic problems. We must handle those problems and volatility appropriately, and we must find a proper balance between promoting economic growth, ensuring employment, and holding down inflation. We must overcome the imbalance, the lack of coordination, and unsustainability in our economic development, and ensure sustained and orderly growth of our economy, we have to also pay attention to environmental protection and address the pressure from population resources and environmental degradation. I often say to myself one sentence, that is, A person at an official post shall not fear difficulties or disasters so long as we adopt proper policies and unite with the people. I believe we will be able to overcome difficulties the second problem we have encountered is actually frequently asked about by the entrepreneurs. That is the recent contaminated baby milk powders. This has reviewed that in our process of modernization, in this link of uh, production oversight and supervision, there is still much room for improvement and some problems to resolve. It has also reviewed to us that in the process of development, the government should pay more attention to business ethics and uh, social morality. This issue has not been completely resolved, but here I would like to assure all the entrepreneurs present here that we will take speedy actions to and adopt a program to revitalize China's whole food industry. We plan to not only revitalize the food industry and the uh, milk powder industry, we will try to ensure that all the China-made products are safe to the consumers and the consumers can buy assured. 
I'd like to see once again I and my government will forge ahead and lead the people in overcoming this difficult time. Yesterday, I saw from a program on Phoenix TV, Mr. Mendelssohn. I wonder he is here or not. I saw him drink a cup of milk made by China. As a sign of confidence in Chinese products, I was deeply moved by that because he aims at not only the present but also the future. When this problem of the food safety occurs, we do not cover things up. We face it candidly and have taken bold moves to address it. I think this has laid a good foundation for resolving problems, and I'm confident to say that I will not disappoint the entrepreneurs present here. We will not let down the Chinese people and the people around the world. Thank you. Thank you, Premier Wen. I can assure you I drank also my milk coffee this morning in the hotel. But it was a very reassuring message, and we thank you for giving us such a comprehensive insight into the strategic thinking of yourself, of your country. And on behalf of all of us, I would like to express again our deep gratitude for your support also for the support by all the distinguished uh, members of the government who are here with us today. Thank you, and we are looking forward, I may say, to see you soon again, because you should feel always proud of this community which we are building up. Thank you, Premier Wen.